Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we come to the last session before lunch, uh, which is a postgraduate speed session, and it is chaired by Danelle Fenter, whom I'd like to introduce. So, Danelle, over to you. Thank you, Prof. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the second part of the postgraduate presentations. Similar to session three, each student will present their research in two minutes and there won't be a Q&A session. However, you are welcome to interact with the speakers via the chat function if the network allows. Enjoy the talks. Morning, everybody. So today I'll be discussing the temporal changes of endocrine variables in beagle dogs that were experimentally infected with Babesia rossi. So our specific objective was to longitudinally track cortisol, T4 and TSH in five experimental dogs and to assess the differences in these endocrine variables between dogs that were infected with a high dose versus those that were infected with a low dose of parasite inoculum. Now, if we look at our results, the dogs in the high dose group had much higher parasitemias and they also presented with clinically more severe disease. Then if we look at our cortisol graph, we can see that both groups showed an increase in cortisol concentration after infection and that cortisol then decreased back to the control values after treatment. In the high dose group specifically, we saw a very rapid and a very large increase when we compared it to the low dose group. Then if we look at T4, we see the exact opposite. We can see that both groups showed a decrease in T4 concentration after infection with an increase back to the control values after treatment. And again, in the high dose group, we saw a very rapid and then a very large decrease in T4 when we compared it to the low dose group the TSH concentrations remained within reference intervals throughout the study period in both groups. So in conclusion, we can say that cortisol and T4 track the progression and the recovery from disease in experimental Babesia rossi infection. Patients with higher cortisol and lower T4 can alert a clinician to potentially more serious disease, whilst improvement in these values can confirm that the patient is responding to the current treatment protocol. Greetings everyone, I'm Terence. My project is development of a serologically based vaccine machine technique for set 2 FMD viruses under the supervision of Dr. Opperman and Dr. Heath. FMD is a viral disease affecting atudactyle animals. The virus has seven serotypes and serotypes set 1, 2 and 3 are confined within the Southern African region. FMD is highly antigenic and vaccine does not protect against different serotype or even within a certain serotype, hence vaccine matching is important. Recently, there has been an increase in C2 outbreaks. The emerging new virus strains from the field affect vaccine efficacy. A swift selection of appropriate vaccine strains that will be included in vaccine formulation is essential. It's also important to develop a rapid vaccine matching tool. The current vaccine matching tool used is virus neutralizing test that is laborious and time consuming. For the project, six FMD set two strains were selected and the antigen were produced. The solid competition ELISA was designed and optimized as a vaccine machine tool. The pentavalent sera derived from kettles that were vaccinated with the newly developed pentavalent vaccine from the ARC were used to determine the protection coverage against selected viruses. The ELISA OD results were used to calculate percentage inhibition and percentage inhibition was further used to determine the serum type. The table on the left represents the serum title of the strains for all the samples tested. Box plot on the right represents the calculated R1 value for each strain. R1 value is a ratio used to determine antigenic relatedness. An R1 value of 0.4 to 1 indicates antigenic relatedness between vaccine strain and the field virus, where less than 0.4 indicates antigenic distance. In conclusion, the R1 value results are above 0.4 across all set 2 strains. There is antigenic relatedness between pentavalent vaccine strain and the selected C2 strains. 
the ARC pentavalent vaccine can protect against selected C2 strains. Thank you. Good day. Bovine anaplasmosis caused by anaplasma marginale is one of the most economically important tick-borne diseases of cattle in Southern Africa with economic losses estimated to be approximately 115 million per year. Sporadic cases of anaplasmosis have been reported in villages close to the wildlife livestock interface in the Mnizu community in Mpomalanga province. We hypothesized that this may be due to challenge with A. marginale strains from wildlife. Therefore, this study was aimed at investigating the dynamics of anaplasma marginale infection and the diversity of circulating strains in 10 cows in two areas of the Munisi community during a one-year period. Anaplasma marginale was detected in the five cows at the peri-urban area and only detected in two cows at the wildlife livestock interface. A total number of 47 A. marginale MSP1 genotypes were identified in the seven cows that were infected in the Munisi community, of which only four genotypes were found to overlap between the two areas. Although A. marginale was only identified in two cows at the wildlife livestock interface, genotypes identified per cow are comparable with those detected in the peri-urban area. The five cows that were infected with A. marginale in the peri-urban area were initially singly or co-infected with A. marginale strains but later super-infected with different strains. The same trend of infection is further observed in the two cows that were infected at the wildlife livestock interface even though three cows did not get infected at all or only got infected after the one-year period. So in conclusion, complex A. marginale infections acquired by co-infection and super-infection occur in both areas of the Munisi community. Our results further highlight differences in temporal infection dynamics of A. marginale with all five cows in the peri-urban area infected in the first month or two and the two cows at the wildlife livestock interface infected at month six or seven. Rather than challenge with strains from wildlife, cattle density and management which differ at the two areas may drive the dynamics of a marginal infection in the area. I thank you for listening. My name is Veronica Odinga Ame and I'm here to make a presentation on serum neutralization profiles of straw-colored fruit bats Adolin Helfum against four lineages of Ligus bat lisa viruses. Rabies is a viral zoonotic disease of all warm-blooded mammals and is worldwide in distribution. It is caused by the rabies virus, which is a raptovirus of the family Raptoviridae and genus Lysavirus. There are 17 species in this genus, which have been grouped into three phylogroups based on immunogenicity and antigenic properties. <clears throat> all the 17 species have been isolated from bats except for the Mokola virus and the Ecoma virus. The Lagos bat lisa virus belongs to the phylogroup group two alongside Shimoni bat virus and Mokola virus. The Lagos bat virus uh, is made up of four lineages, lineage A, lineage B, lineage C, and lineage D. Although lineage B was first isolated in Nigeria in 1956, there is no information on lineages circulating in Nigeria at the moment. Um, <clears throat> 180 serous samples were collected from terminally bled bats that were captured for human consumption and were tested using modified fluorescent antibody virus neutralization test for antibodies to the four lineages of the Lagos bat viruses. Um, of this, a high proportion of the bat serous, 74% neutralized at least one lineage of LBV, 63% neutralized LBVA, 49% of the serous neutralized LBVD, 45% neutralized LBVC, and 24% neutralized LBVB. Many serous neutralized multiple lineages of the LBV, while 33 serous neutralized only a single lineage exclusively. With LBV, with 23 serous neutralizing only LBVA, 8 serous neutralizing only LBVB, only LBVD, and 2 serous neutralizing only LBVC. None of the serous neutralized LBVB exclusively. Based on results of antigenic cartography, the results show that majority of the serous position closest 
to LBVA with 1.3 antigenic units away from LBVA, while uh, the seria with 1.6 antigenic units away from LBVD, and then 2.1 antigenic units away from LBVC, and 3.1 antigenic units away from LBVB. LBVB virus is positioned furthest from other viruses and sera in this study, reflecting less cross neutralization of LBVB by the sera tested. The high sera prevalence of neutralizing antibodies definitely supports exposures to Ligus batlisa viruses to be common in the study area. It appears that LBVA and possibly LBVC and D are circulating among this bat species, whereas LBVB is unlikely to be present. The infected bats could pose potential dangers to the handlers and consumers, particularly during capture and processing of the bats' carcasses. Thank you. My name is Musa Emura Manyenyeka. I'm going to do my presentation on my dissertation entitled Spatial Temporal Analysis of Bob in Zimbabwe from 1995 to 2018. My study leaders were Dr. Marufu and Dr. Tagbire. Bob is a serious veterinary challenge that is responsible for high keto mortalities in Zimbabwe, though its spatial and temporal distribution dynamics remain scant and outdated. A retrospective study was done for the period 1995 to 2018 on data obtained from the Department of Livestock and Veterinary Services of Zimbabwe with the aim to describe the spatial temporal patterns of the disease as well as evaluating the significance of potential risk factors associated with the occurrence of bovine telosis in Zimbabwe. Data was analyzed using StatScan for spatial temporal clustering and other studies for evaluation of potential risk factors. Bovantelosis was observed to be rising in number of cases, number of affected districts, as well as losing its seasonality. Five and four high-risk clusters of bovantelosis were detected using one year and one month aggregation times, respectively, or within the last eight years of the study, that is 2011 to 2018. All the six tested high-risk factors were found to be significantly associated with the occurrence of bovine theliosis. There is a need for increased farmer awareness on bovine theliosis, correct and consistent use of acaricides by farmers, cattle movement control, and improved disease surveillance strategies to keep the increased spatial distribution of the disease as well as the overall number of disease cases. I thank you. Good day, everyone. Thanks for listening to my presentation, low-dose fire fentanyl in combination with azepiron alone or azepiron and metatomidine for the immobilization of African buffalo. African buffalo are frequently immobilized for veterinary interventions, disease screening, and translocations. Due to the frequency and associated costs at which chemical immobilizations occur, as well as for safety reasons and previous difficulties in opioid supply, alternative immobilization protocols are needed. This study was to compare the times to recumbency and physiological effects of the conventional fentanyl aseparone combination to an alternative combination combining fentanyl, metatomidine and aseparone. It was a randomized crossover study using 12 African buffalo. Animals received either fentanyl at 6 to 7 mg and aseparone at 40 mg per animal or fentanyl at 1 mg, metatomidine at 3 to 4 mg and aseparone at 40 mg per animal. We measured induction and recovery times, blood gases, quality of immobilization, and cardiorespiratory variables. There was a 21-day washing out period in between data collections. We found that the TA combination induced a significantly quicker and more reliable induction. The TMA combination induced immobilization at only a quarter of the costs, and immobilization seemed to be superior. All animals were hypoxemic. The respiratory rates were within the normal physiological range. To summarize, hypoxemia was of great concern with both combinations. As indicated by the widened AA gradient, hypoxemia was predominantly caused by poor oxygen diffusion rather than hyperventilation. Based on the measured respiratory rates, it is important to emphasize that despite an adequate breathing efficacy, hypoxemia was significantly more profound than the TMA combination. 
the enormous reduction in costs with a TMA combination could be beneficial for the wildlife industry. However, the longer induction times and risks from marked hypoxemia need to be addressed too. Hello everyone, my name is Janine and I'd like to give you a short introduction into semen collection and cryopreservation in African rhinos. As we all know, rhino populations are at risk because of poaching and habitat loss despite so many conservation efforts. And we therefore try to utilize management interventions, for example, dehorning or ear notching, that require anesthesia anyway for semen collection with the idea to create genetic reservoirs and be able to use those samples in the future, for example, for AI or embryo transfer, should it ever become necessary. To assist semen collection, we ideally need to slightly adapt the anesthetic protocol as the zeprin that's usually combined with the torphine inhibits semen emission, where as the um, metatomidin actually promotes it. We tested um, electro ejaculation in animals in sternal position with a portable electro ejaculator and a specifically designed probe that was positioned dorsal of the prostate, as you can see in the picture, and applied sets of stimulations alternating with rest. Additionally, we also started to perform urethral catheterization with a nasogastric tube that was passed retrograde up the urethra to collect semen via um, capillary flow. Semen was collected into 50 milliliter um, tubes that were covered by a modified rectal glove and insulation foam to protect the samples from dust and temperature shock and were then immediately transferred into an insulated box and then um, carried to our field lab where they were evaluated and frozen. Both methods were successful and we were able to freeze a total of 24 white and four black rhino samples of good quality and liquid nitrogen. And we can therefore conclude that semen collection and cryopreservation can successfully be integrated into management procedures, despite the varying circumstances and the limited time available. Antibacterial interactions, anti-inflammatory cytotoxicity, antibiofilm effects of uh, medicinal plant species used for the cutaneous wound infections. Cutaneous wound infections are the ones that uh, proceed more uh, <coughs> due to failure to progress from uh, the normal stages into the next stages. Cutaneous wound infections in animals in South Africa have created a lot of problems that resulted into uh, animals uh, dying or animals uh, becoming more crippled or the loss of production in the, the, the world of agricultural science. The, the aim of the study was to investigate the, the inflammatory, antibacterial, and antibiofilm of the five plants, Elephantina, Elephantoras, uh, Alomaloti, uh, uh, Ecliptus, uh, Galmatis, uh, Euphrophodia classes, and Musa uh, Akulaminata, which uh, uh, have been used by the Skukuni people for for, for the cutaneous wound. The plants themselves, uh, collections, authentication, uh, drying, and uh, also crude uh, um, extraction of acetate, and also the MIC were uh, determined of the, 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 the plants. The plants resulted in uh, antimicrobial activities uh, or antibacterial activities that uh, shows the, the antibacterial and also anti-inflammatory and the cytotoxicity of the plants were found to be lower and there are also there are combinations also uh, have proved to uh, work against the the preformed biofilm which is more resistant to most of the the plants in conclusion that is that the the the, the cutaneous wound could be managed and controlled on that and the acetate uh, extract could uh, have shown that it could help uh, in in the extraction of uh, the the plants in uh, managing the antimicrobial and then further studies should be done on uh, the, the the animal model thank you good afternoon ladies and gentlemen my name is Hassan Ibrahim and the title of our presentation is Evaluating the effect of bambamycin on MCR1 associated cholestein resistance in E. coli. Cholestein is a cationic antimicrobial agent which is regarded critically important by the World Health Organization. 
It is often relied upon to treat extremely drug-resistant infections, especially in ICUs. However, in 2016, a new type of cholesterol resistance, termed MCR1, which is usually transmissible between bacterial species, was reported in China and South Africa. This emergence effectively compromised the clinical utility of cholesterol use as a drug. Thus, the present study is designed to mitigate this menace using bambamycin, which is another veterinary drug compound. As a first objective, we evaluated the synergistic effect of bambamycin on cholestine to see if bambamycin is able to improve the efficacy of cholestine on MCR1 positive strains. Secondly, we assessed the effect of bambamycin on resistance transmission between bacterial species. These were achieved by carrying out antimicrobial susceptibility testing, checkerboard assays, and bacterial conjugation assays. Looking at our checkerboard assay results, uh, we can see that bambamycin was able to improve the efficacy of cholestine in killing cholestine resistant strains of E. coli carrying the MCR1 gene. And this could be seen with most strain tested. Similarly, with the conjugation assay, we can observe that bambamycin significantly suppressed the transmission of cholestine resistance between bacterial organisms over time. In conclusion, these findings suggest that bambamycin could be employed to address this menace by incorporating it into feed to reduce MCR1 shedding. Thank you for listening. Good day, everyone. I am Obuadike Yukeri Achika, a PhD student of phytomedicine program. Thank you for being here. I'm going to present the paper titled Anti-Inflammatory and Antioxidant Activity of Selected Medicinal and Invasive Plants of South Africa with Potential for Developing Mastitis Medication. Inflammation is a major feature of mastitis, a disease caused by microbial infection and which affects both cattle and humans. Uncontrolled inflammation can result in cell damage and it can also be accompanied with harmful reactive oxygen species. Earlier, we've got plant extracts that have good activity against mastitis causative bacteria. And these plants are Morrisonia frangula, Metenus odenta, Colancao pinata, Bryophyllum pinatum. And here, we extracted these plants with ethanol and acetone and assayed them for antioxidant activity, anti-inflammatory activity, and also assay their effect on cell viability using activated raw macrophages. Result. Results and discussions for antioxidant assays and anti-inflammatory assay with 15 locks, Kalankawa pinata extracts had the best activity with IC50 values ranging from 0.06 to 2.03 micrograms per mil. Trolox and ascorbic acid were positive controls for antioxidant assays. Quercetin was positive control for anti-inflammatory assays. For nitrooxide inhibition, Brephylum pinatum extracts had the best activity with nitrooxide inhibition above 78% and cell viability above 90%. Conclusions Kalankawa pinata and Brephylum pinatum extracts had good activity and are safe at all concentrations. Further work is ongoing on formulations and active compound isolations. Thank you for your attention. Good day everyone, I'm Rebecca Atemito Peakonde. I'm a graduate student with the Phytomedicine Group, Department of Clinical Sciences. My presentation is on an aspect of my PhD study titled Some Many Spermacy Species Have Draw Inhibitory Effect Against Mycobacterium Species and C. Elegans. Background Mycobacterium tuberculosis form with cellular communities called Balfin, common to most microorganisms. They achieve this by hiding inside the infected host macrophages to evade stressful situations such as the host immune response and chemotherapy. In tuberculosis, helmet co-infection, an indication of helmet infection results in increased t helper 2 and t regulatory cell responses, which inhibit the t helper one cell development and result in the pathogenesis of TB. t helper one is pro-inflammatory to tuberculosis, while t helper 2 result in increased susceptibility to tuberculosis. Some species of the Menispermaceae family are used locally to treat worms and tuberculosis-related symptoms. The aim of this study is to evaluate the potential of Menispermaceae species against causal organisms of tuberculosis and elminthiasis. Materials and methods. The dried pulverized materials, which is the leaves and stem of Cisampelos migronata, Cisampelos ovariensis plant, 
and the area part of Tinospora goes were extracted with acetone hot water methanol water 4 in 1 and dichloromethane methanol 1 in 1. The minimum inhibitory concentration was determined by broad dilution method by Tran et al. 2017 using Ems Magmatis MC squared 155. Biofilm assay was carried out by the method of Cardi et al. 2012 using the same biofilm strain Ems Magmatis MC squared 155. The anti helmet effect was evaluated by mortality as a mega at all 2000. Discussion Cisampelos micronata had a potent inhibitory effect on the biofilm strain with an MIC of 0.06 mg per ml compared to the positive control of ampicin, which had an MIC of 0.47 mg per ml. When MIC is less than 0.1, it has a potent antimicrobacterial effect. From 0.1 to 0.65 it has a moderate effect and 0.65 to 1 or greater than 1 it has a poor effect. This is Ampelos species add good to poor antibiofilm effect. Biofilm inhibitory effect was between 91 to 100 percent while the dispersion effect was between 19 to 100 percent. When the antibiofilm effect is less than 50 it is poor when it is greater than 50, it is good. The Cisampella species had relatively high anti helminthic effect. Tinospora fargosa had moderate inhibitory effect on the biofilm strain with an MIC of 0.47 mg per ml. It has a good to poor anti biofilm effect. Biofilm inhibitory effect was 91% and the dispersion effect was 13%. It also exhibited a low anti helminthic activity. In conclusion, the species are promising leads for opportunistic infection and can be used in conjunction with the current tuberculosis chemotherapy. Extracts and compounds with good antibiofilm effects can be used in conjunction with the current tuberculosis chemotherapy because they have the ability to break the persistent nature of the mycobacterium strain and reduce the usually long tuberculosis treatment period. This study supports the traditional use of Cisampelos species for helmet infection. Cisampelos species may be a potential source of pathochemicals with dual effects against mycobacterium species and C. elegans. The antibiofilm and anti helminthic effect of the plant has not been investigated prior to this study. Thanks for listening. Thank you to all presenters. Uh, we now will reconvene at uh, 2 o'clock at 14 hours for the uh, presentation by our Vice Chancellor, Professor Coupe, as well as the presentation of the Tyler Memorial Lecture. Please remember to visit the booths of our uh, sponsors, our um, advertisers who contributed to the success of this day and in